Sunday morning and it's a gorgeous day. It is now the 2nd of June I think and as usual Sunday morning Morrison's Hall. Not much in the veg department, um, lots in the bread and other things department. I didn't buy any of that, I was really well behaved. So what did I get? I have Punnet Buttons, they were 95p down to 66p. I have four corn cobbets, or cobbets, which were 150 and are now 60p. I have some carrots, these were 50p down to 20p. Uh, what else do I have? And the other thing I have, there were loads of pears, loads of packs of pears. Uh, these were £2.15 down to 65p. There's four in a pack, so I bought three packs. It says ripe and ready to eat, and some of them feel like they are, but not all of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bottle some of these, and I'm going to show you later how I bottle fruit. Um, so if you get like lots of fruit like that, and you're worried about, can I possibly eat it all in time, just bottle it. It's really nice then to use in pies and crumbles and other fruit based things. I also use it and pop it, dice it up and put it into my cakes. So a pear cake is really nice. And it just adds a little bit of, um, little bit of something else in there. Uh, they don't come up that often, which is why I bought the three, but I left a lot of hacks behind because you can't have everything. So this lot came to £3.41. As usual, I shall put the difference in up there so you can see what I saved. And that is my Sunday morning shot. So yeah, I'm going to, it's almost lunchtime now. So I'm going to have lunch and then I'm going to bottle, bottle these. And I'm going to show you how I do it because it's easy. As long as you can afford uh, sugar and you keep your bottles, keep your jars, your glass jars with metal lids and things like that. And they're really handy. I keep a huge, well not a huge, but a, a large cardboard box full of different shaped um, glass bottles and jars which I use for bottling as and when I have things to bottle. So I'm going to get on this morning and show you that in a bit. Okay, so this afternoon I'm going to bottle two of these Of pears and I can use them in pies crumbles all that sort of stuff so the first thing I have done is I have pulled out a load of jars and I have washed and rinsed them so they're ready to use now I don't know how many jars I need so I've pulled out a selection and I've pulled out a selection where each jar will be enough for one recipe because if you do a, a really big jar and you fill it full of pears and then when you want to use it you open it and you only use half those other ones are going to go off because you need to use them all at once once they're sealed they need to stay sealed until you need them they also need to have metal lids and that's because once you've bottled uh, the vacuum will that's the little pressure point when you um, when you bottle them as the heat goes it creates a vacuum and keeps the jar sealed so that what's in it doesn't go off so I have the lids here they're all washed I have the bottles ready to go the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chop the pears because I need to work out how many jars I actually need so Get all these out. Now, all I am going to do for these, the jars are pretty much the right length for the pears, so all I'm going to do is top and tail the pears. I'm 
going to leave the skin on my pears. I have no problems with skins on fruits, on vegetables. Uh, a lot of the nutrition is in them. So I'm literally, I'm not even going to decor these because they don't even have much in them. I'm just going to cut them into long slices that I could imagine them lying in a pie, for instance. But if you want, you can cut them into chunks or any other size that you think will fit better the recipes you can imagine using them for. Equally, when you're bottling them, you might need to trim a few up if they don't fit. I suspect I might have to do that with these. Now that looks like a lot. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my pears and I'm going to fit them into the jars so I get a rough approximation for um, how many jars I need. Now you do need to pack things quite tightly, you don't want too much juice loose in your in your jars. Um, but as I say, you can you can trim your pears if they're not quite fitting. And if you've got different sized different sized jars, but this will give me a good approximation so that when I do the next stage. I'm not creating any waste because we don't do waste. It's not going to fit. Trimming them as needed is absolutely fine because you need to make the most of the space. great because it's very rare that fruit comes up on discount in the supermarket it's one thing that you don't tend to see very often so when I do see a glut of them like today where there was just so much I can make the most of that and save this so that I can enjoy it pears all the time You also need to leave a little space at the top, so for instance this jar is a little bit high. You need to leave a little bit of space so that the fruit isn't sticking out the top when you seal the jars because otherwise it's going to go off. It needs to be fully submersed, so to speak. So, And the more fruit you can pack in, the less of the, 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 the preparation you need to do for the next ingredient and that will save you some money so get them nice and as packed in as you can you don't want too much space in the jars because it's a waste otherwise I think actually we may have pulled out the right number of jars here that was lucky Let's just get that in there I think 
we might be able to do some moving around here and lose less jars. So this is why you do this like this, because it's really good to get it down to a fine number. As I say, you end up chopping up your your pairs to fit anyway, which is absolutely fine and dependent on what you need. So we'll get that shoved in there nice and tight. think that will probably do so I don't need that jar right what I need to do now is work out how much water I need for this so I'm going to get myself my big jug with a bit of water and I'm now going to fill I'm going to fill these with water. about right. Okay. The next job now is to remove that water. And all I'm going to do for this is you turn your jars up, you make sure that your pears don't fall out, and all you're doing is tipping that water back into the jug. And what this is doing is telling you exactly how much water you need to fill your jars. hundred millilitres, so about 1.3 litres of water. So what have I got here? I've got basically five and a half cups. Now you need one cup of sugar for every three cups of water. So I have five and a half cups. And if I divide that into three, that means I'm going to need 1.83 cups of sugar. So what I'm going to do now is tip the water into my saucepan. What I'm now going to do is boil this water on the hob and as it gets hot I'm going to stir in the sugar. In the meantime
I need to boil water for my jars and I'll show you why in a moment. Now what I'm going to do is put my jars back into the bowl. Because what you've got to remember here is you've got cold glass. And if you put boiling water into cold glass, it's just going to crack. Or the chances are it's going to crack. So what I'm going to do is once that kettle has almost boiled, I'm going to run a little bit of cold water and I am going to fill almost up to the top with hot water to warm the jars up. They don't have to be boiling hot but to warm them up so that once I pour in the boiling sugar syrup they don't crack. And then what I can do is put the lids on and as they cool down you will create that vacuum that you need to preserve the fruit. So I'm just going to wait for all this to boil and then I can show you the next stage. I mean literally all you need is jars and I just collect jars from things that I bought in the shops my parents go through a lot of glass jars, so very often they would hang on to all their glass jars until I come down, and then I pick the best ones that I think are going to be good for what I need. And I also preserve blackberries in the autumn in the same way, so I have loads and loads of blackberries to last me throughout the year because we have loads of blackberries around here. Um, I have also used it to preserve lemons. Uh, flesh and rind and the same with oranges now for the oranges and even for the lemons if you want you can cut off the rind and you can freeze that it doesn't matter it depends it depends what you want it for I mean very often if I'm making like a lemon cake I will just use the rind and I will just uh, take it out the freezer and finally uh, chop it into strips um, and then just stick it in the cake recipe and you get a lovely lemon recipe. You can do so much with so much and with so little as well. I mean this recipe just calls for my yellow sticker pears. I've got jars. I need not an enormous amount of sugar. I've used about 500 grams of sugar and I just need to boil tap water. And that's great. I've actually discovered that I have quite a few pears still bottled in the cupboard from last year. So I'm going to go mad and make pear pies and uh, pear tarts and all sorts of things so that I can start to use that up because now I have one, two, three, four, five, another seven jars to use. Okay, so our water for our sugar is boiling, so I'm just going to tip the sugar in, let that dissolve. hot water is just about to boil so let's move you back
do this with a little care just to get it started. solution into my plastic jug just to make it easier to pour. And now I'm just going to start filling these. Let's start with the one that's floating. And I'll do it a little bit at a time to ensure that glass doesn't break. to match up the jars with their lids and screw them on don't forget they're really hot who goes with who lids nice and tight. Just be careful about them because they're really hot. Give them a shake to make sure that all the bubbles are at the top, if there are any, and then pop them back in the water for a bit. These, some of these jars have the depression in them and as they start to cool down you might hear the odd pop as these depression points get sucked back down and that's how you know that you've created that vacuum. So that's how I bottle fruit for preservation. It's simple, it's easy, that's taken, what, half an hour or so, and it's a really good way to preserve things that either don't go in the freezer or you just don't have the freezer space for. I don't think you can freeze pears anyway, at least not raw. 
Uh, right, so I'm going to get sorted out, I'm going to get tidied up. Once of these bottles have been cooling for a bit, I'm just going to put them on my kitchen shelf and just let them cool completely and then once they're done they can go in the cupboard and I can use them as and when. But um, this is a great way to make that wonderful fruit last all year. So give it a go if you can, if you want to and um, enjoy the process. It's a nice slow process, I enjoy it. It's the least fussy, it's the simplest, it's the least expensive way to do it. I know there are lots of other ways that you can do this other people prefer other methods. I've always used this one and it's been working for me for the last three or four years since I've been bottling and um, yeah it's just simple and it, uh, it goes with my frugal lifestyle and my frugal cooking which is to keep things cheap but keep things interesting and keep food fun. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, give it a go. I've been trying to get my life in order <laughs> Some life admin, I suppose. I have never been very good at keeping my emails tidy. So today I've been going through and deleting emails. I have unread emails going back to 2021. And I've been marking everything as read because it currently it was showing 439 unread emails in my inbox. And I've divided them up into years and then I've searched by search terms and deleted things like mailing lists, uh, weekly emails from companies that I don't need to keep. And I've deleted probably hundreds of emails. So I've done that across all my email addresses. I have, I mean, I can't even remember when I started using the internet. It will have been when I first went out to work in London, which was probably in the late 90s. And I discovered MySpace and then Facebook and then you get an email address and all these sorts of things. I've, I've got seven email addresses at the moment. I have four blogs, none of which I currently regularly update. Well, one for my business and I lost the detail, the access details to one of my blogs the other day. And as I was searching through trying to find which email address went with which WordPress account, I was discovering all these blogs that I had abandoned years ago that I still had the login information on. So I've been deleting those because some of the email addresses, addresses have been deleted by Yahoo and Gmail because they've been inactive for such a long time. And if the email addresses have gone then the blogs have gone so I've been deleting all that login information because it's just taking up space so I've had a, a nice little digital declutter today I've also today been repotting all those little tomatoes and the, um, the purple sprouting broccoli they've been growing in toilet rolls for the last couple of months and I've now moved them into bigger pots some of them are going to go down with me to my parents because some of the tomatoes are for them and the others will be going out into um, my pot space outside once they're big enough to fend for themselves they're quite slow at the moment and tomatoes really do not like growing indoors it gets to a certain point where you have to get them out as soon as possible because they just don't like it I've found that they only tend to grow to a certain point and then you have to put them out because they want the real fresh air, I guess. So I've been doing that. So I've been trying to tidy things up and I don't know whether it's a mental burnout or I have just can't be bothered, but I've been really slack on keeping up with people as well. Um... The last time I saw my cousin was last September and we kept talking about, oh, we must meet up, we must meet up. And then the last time she messaged me about it was in April and we still haven't done it. My best friend I haven't seen for 18 months and I have a friend over in Liverpool who I haven't seen since 2021. And I don't realise it's that long. I think because all these people are on social media, so you catch up with them there, so you know what's going on. So there doesn't feel to be this need to catch up in person as often but now that I am not using Instagram 
I've just got bored of using it. I'm fed up with all the adverts. I am fed up of all the sponsored posts. I am fed up of all the accounts that appear on my feed that I don't follow and I don't know how they even get there. I'm fed up, fed up of all the friend suggestions and celeb suggestions for people that I don't even know. And I'm also fed up with all the AI rubbish. There are so many people posting up AI generated images and pretending that they're real and all the backlash that comes from that. You look at some of the comments and people get really angry about it. And I just thought, you know what, I can't be bothered. I cannot be bothered. Instagram is very non-reactive. You scroll and you scroll and you scroll and there are posts and comments and posts and comments all the time. And it's pretty meaningless. I don't find the imagery very interesting anymore. I think I've got so into YouTube and this whole, look, there's a person moving around doing long form video and you can watch them for an hour if they're doing a live feed and they put that up as a video, you might have a five hour video. If you want something just running in the background and you like a particular YouTuber, you can just run their live feeds in the background while you go off and do other stuff and it's like a, a long form podcast. And I don't watch many of those or I don't have many of those on because they tend to be reacting to comments and things. And it's, But if there's nothing else in my YouTube list of things to watch or things to listen to, because a lot of these podcasts I actually just listen to, because if I sat there all day watching them, I'd never do anything else because I have so many accounts that I follow. So most of them are on in the background while I'm doing other things like work, doing admin, editing videos, all that sort of thing. And the editing of videos and doing YouTube takes up a lot of time. And um, particularly where I'm doing quite a lot of videos at the moment because, just because I have little things I want to do. And there will go, then there will be phases where I have nothing at all. So I try to batch them all up so that when I don't have anything to say or I'm having a week where I'm busy doing other things, I can space out those videos. So where you see videos every single day it's because I have a lot that needs to chronologically go in the right order and when you start to see them appear every other day or every couple of days that's because I have less to talk about and I just don't want to make video just for the sake of it um, because how much a day in the life do you want to see I don't mind if it's like bits and pieces like oh, I'm going off to do an errand and all that sort of thing. But me just sitting down and waffling to the camera just because I feel like I have to provide half an hour of time every day it is, it is, isn't how I want to how I want to run this channel. I want there to be some structure and some usefulness to each one. So I try to sometimes I'll do recipes that are on their own. Sometimes, like this one today, where you've had the bottling of the pears, I was going to do that as a separate, and then I thought, I'll just put it in amongst these. I mean, it's going to be sandwiched between two little bits of nattering, but it's basically about bottling pears. But you'll see that on the title, so you'll find it. And I'll add it to the cooking, the cooking playlist as well. So just bits and pieces like that, really. Um, I think this week's going to be quite quiet the rain has landed again and I don't think I have much going on this week so I'm doing a lot of life admin I've been packaging up Etsy and Shopify orders and just enjoying being a little bit busy from a business perspective and thinking about how I can approach marketing in the future for my business because I I'm starting to feel like I want to get back to it I've had quite a hiatus for the last, probably best part of a year. And now I feel like I'm getting back into it again. And that may be because I've had sales. But anyway, uh, that's for another channel. <laughs> uh, that's for my little business channel. Um, but anyway, so that's it really. Uh, we're out of things to say now. But I hope you enjoyed the bottling, the bottling of the pears. It's very useful. And you can bottle pretty much any fruit. There are vegetables that you can bottle, but I haven't done that. I tend to stick to the fruit because fruit is a valuable commodity to me. You don't see much of it on discount in the shops. So when I do like the pears, I'll buy lots of it and I will 
batch bottle it for rainy days. Um, I also forage for blackberries and things like that, so when we get a glut of those in the autumn, I'll be bottling lots of those as well. Um, but fruit, vegetables I tend not to. I tend to freeze a lot of vegetables and there always seem to be discounts on vegetables at my local shop. It's not such a big deal. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's another update done. Coming thick and fast at the moment. Anyone would think my life was interesting. <laughs>